What's up you guys, it's Steve here, and will we see those $1,000 stimulus checks for all Americans on a federal level, a fourth federal level check, like I shared with you, articles coming out yesterday, or will we see the Gas Rebate Act of 2022 with monthly reoccurring stimulus checks to help out with these increased gas prices? Now, I'm going to keep you up to date. This is all coming back to the forefront right now as Congress is working away to help out Americans and do so right before the midterm elections. And we're hearing this is very much so likely going to be needed because what we're hearing is on the horizon for our economy. Well, it's not looking good. I'm going to share with you all the details and the video footage in this video right now. This is your breaking news stimulus check update and stimulus package update. Now, take a look at these headlines coming out. Ben Bernanke helped the U.S. recover in 2008 and now sees a huge warning sign on inflation, stagflation, and student loan debt. Some of the issues that they're saying they need to address right away. Former Federal Reserve Chair warns the U.S. economy faces stagflation after Central Bank missed it on inflation. And yes, we're seeing this inflation at a 41-year high, and they're saying it's not looking like it's going to come down anytime soon. They used to say it was transitory. Now they're saying it might be here to stay. Now, Federal Reserve Chair Powell, he says that they're going to be working to resolve this and bring inflation down in the United States. Powell says that the Fed will not hesitate to keep raising rates until inflation comes down. And we're going to be seeing what they're going to be doing and to what extent they're going to be pushing those rates up to slow things down and stop inflation in its tracks. Now, we're hearing that this might be going on for quite some time. And we're also going to be taking a look at some video footage that's going to mention that this is actually not sparked by spending, that this is a global phenomenon that's taking place due to supply chain shortages and issues that we're having with oil and our, our gasoline, and that that is the main contributing factor. And we've heard reports that two thirds of everything taking place is as a result of the fuel because anything that needs to be transported we're hearing is going up in price and they're saying that providing more stimulus more spending actually is not going to be a huge contributing factor to the inflation that we're experiencing which is why we're now hearing take a look republicans Republican representatives are pushing for $1,000 stimulus to all Americans, saying, listen, instead of sending out the money to Ukraine, that $40 billion, use it for the American people and send out $1,000 stimulus checks. Now, I've shared with you guys here on the channel that the math on that is not quite correct. $40 billion would actually only provide about $120 per individual in the United States, so they need to bump it up significantly. Now, also, we had heard about four different bills for gas stimulus checks, some monthly reoccurring, some quarterly, and they're saying that this would help out Americans as gas prices are surging with everything taking place. Now, we're going to be seeing, and we've heard Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi say that sending out checks will be the best way to help out people and ensure that they get the money in their hands and not just doing a federal tax holiday because that doesn't ensure that the companies, which are taking record profits right now, doesn't ensure that they're going to bring the prices down. They might just take bigger profit margins, which we're going to be seeing in the video footage here in just a second, is exactly what they're doing. Now, if you want to get caught up on the fourth federal level check of $1,000 that's currently proposed, check out my last video right after this one. Go take a look. I give you all the details on everything that's happening with that right now and what they're saying. And also, state, counties, and cities are sending out their own stimulus checks right now to their residents, helping them out. They are hitting bank accounts right now. In some cases, you have to apply and let them know you need it. So be sure to stay up to date here on the channel on that. Check out another video I just did on new updates right after this one if you missed it. But you guys, let's go ahead and dive right in and also consider joining my second channel, Steve Ram Finance. And I know right now the government is not sending out checks. So if you're wanting to take your financial situation into your own hands, on my second channel, I share with you some of the things that I've learned from multimillionaires that has helped change my life financially. I pray it's a blessing for you. If you're interested, consider joining that channel. I'll pin a comment down below. Click the link, go subscribe, turn on notifications. Going to be releasing more content on starting businesses investing in stocks, real estate, crypto, things to help out people financially. But with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and dive right into the latest. And before we do, though, do me a quick favor. Smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Helps me out a ton. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Also, leave your comments. Share this out if you think it could help out other people. If this is your first time here and you want to stay up to date on everything going on, totally free, why not? Come join the Ram Fam. I'll keep you up to speed. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button, turn on 
that notification bell. If you got any specific questions for me, shoot them to me in the DM on Instagram at steveram3. And with that being said, you guys, let's take a look at this report from Yahoo Finance as to the state of the economy with gas price increases, where we're going to be heading, and what we could see potentially for stimulus. Let's go ahead and dive right in. National gas prices soared to a record high today, reaching $4.43 per gallon on average as the country continues to grapple with soaring inflation. For more on the energy market outlook, we're welcoming in Tom Kloza, Opus Global Head of Energy Analysis. Tom, thanks for joining us this afternoon. We saw a brief moderation in prices at the pump last month, yet now we're back at all-time highs. Do prices climb higher from here? And if so, where do you expect these prices are going to top out? Well, it's certainly going higher in the next week or two. And actually, Emily, May is typically when the futures market for gasoline tends to peak. The peak is uh, almost as predictable as the tides. It's from May 5th till May 15th. So we're right there. But this May is brought particular mayhem, if you will. We've got the May 15th deadline for some European countries and European international traders who may cut off sort of their dealings with Russia. And uh, we've got a driving season, which is probably a little ways away, but where we'll use a lot more molecules than is what had been kind of a quiet spring so far. Well, and speaking of that driving season, what do you think these rising prices are going to mean for the summer travel season? Because we've had companies like Airbnb to the airlines saying that they're already seeing strong demand for some summer travel. But is that all going to be upended if we see energy prices continue to trend in the direction that they have been? I think we're looking at higher prices in the next week or so, and then maybe a little moderation before July. But July and August are going to be sizzling months. I mean, people are going to take their trips in July and August, and you also have hurricane season. Now, if against the background of Putin just scourging the Ukraine, if that's still out there, uh, we've got a summer like we've never seen before. Today, I, I might add this, for example, that with the exception of crude, every single hydrocarbon out there today, or not, uh, but liquids, you know, gasoline, jet fuel, marine fuel, diesel, they all hit national highs. So you're seeing kind of the ramifications of some refining shutdowns in the last year, and it's manifesting itself in much higher prices that are going to make for a May CPI number. Uh, that gets released in a few weeks, it's going to be off the charts. And speaking of that May CPI number, what specifically are you looking for there? Because uh, economists had been looking for March to potentially be the peak here. We did see energy prices post a deceleration uh, for uh, when we take a look at those fuel oil as well as those gas prices on a monthly basis. But what is this actually going to look like when we get that next report in about a month? Uh, we're going to see a lot of insidious inflation because we're looking at by far the highest diesel prices ever and by far the highest jet fuel prices ever. And that's going to manifest itself in higher airfares and higher cost of pretty much everything that moves around the country, you know, from soup to nuts. So uh, I hope that it moderates when we get to June and July. And of course, we hope that one day we wake up and there's no war in the Ukraine and then we can see energy prices tumble. But right now, that does not appear to be in the cards. What is the trickle down effect of these rising energy prices going to look like for companies that have already this past earnings season, the past several weeks, been talking about higher energy costs, higher transportation costs? Are they showing that they're going to be able to pass on these costs continuously? Or is this really going to be something to watch in these uh, second half of the year earnings reports here? To a certain extent, some of it's automatic. For example, everything that moves across the country uh, in big rigs, uh, through maritime vehicles, and even an air freight, you know, they get automatic adjustments based on uh, surcharges that are compiled by the gov government. So the cost of moving things from point A to point B is going to go up automatically. Whether that manifests itself in every single item that people buy, do they have pricing power? I don't know, but uh, inflation is still running away out there. And it's not anybody's fault. You know, I, I would stress that. It's not, you know, this isn't about easy money. This really is about 
all of the energy that typically comes out of Russia that is not going to be coming out in the next weeks and months. And you talk about, the, of course, Russia's war in Ukraine. And when we think about the geopolitical impact of that, how much of a bullish uh, impact is this really having on the markets? You know, if this conflict were to be resolved overnight, what kind of an impact would that have on energy markets? And what's your base case for how this is going to really play out over the next year? The base case is that this continues, that we're in for a long haul of woeful situations. And, uh, you know, regardless of whether you own energy stocks, I think we would all love to wake up one morning with regime change. Uh, but I don't think that's likely to happen. And against that other background, we're looking at high inflation and we're looking at, I mean, epic, epic margins for U.S. refiners right now of all the different areas of the energy business, uh, the people that actually refine the crude oil into products like diesel, jet fuel, and gasoline, they're making epic profits, not because they're colluding, but because the market is bidding it up much as though, you know, all the kids bid, bid up Bitcoin a few months ago. And in terms of the policy response, the response that we've been seeing out of Washington, the White House has been releasing oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. And President Biden has also said he would allow certain blends of gasoline to be sold into the coming months to help lower these fuel prices. Are these measures going to be enough to offset some of these supply side concerns that we've been seeing over the past several months at this point? Well, I, I think the SPR sales, strategic reserve sales, do have an impact. And that's a lot of oil that the U.S. and other countries are going to be releasing. So you know, one wonders if we would be back at $130 to $150 a barrel with oil if we didn't have that. Uh, in terms of adding a little bit more ethanol, ethanol is cheaper than gasoline now. But the fact of the matter is it's not enough to move the needle much because there just aren't that many stations with the equipment that they could sell higher ethanol blends. So it's it's tough for the administration to act on this. The one thing I think we might see is some sort of speed bumps on exports. Because right now, if there's a runaway market, it's been the diesel market. And we export a lot of diesel fuel now. All right, we'll leave it there for now. Tom Closa, Opus Global Head of Energy Analysis. Thank you again so much for your time this afternoon. So there you have it, you guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. As we're hearing, doesn't look like inflation is gonna be slowing down anytime soon. They're gonna to have to crank up those interest rates. We'll see how high they go, how it's gonna impact the economy. We still have the war taking place in Russia and Ukraine. We have the supply chain issues. China is in a lockdown and we're hearing of a new wave ramping up in the United States. All of these contributing to the current situation we have with inflation and high prices. Now, we will see how Congress responds to all this. As I mentioned, they've mentioned federal level stimulus checks. They've mentioned gas stimulus checks reoccurring. We're gonna be seeing what actions they take as also the pressure is on Democrats to get things done as this is a midterm election year and they like to stay in power. So chances are they're gonna be trying to incentivize voters to vote in their favor right before these elections. And we've heard checks popping up left and right now. Now, I will keep you up to date as more information rolls out, you guys, but that is the latest. And as always, thank you so much for joining me here on the channel. If you made it this far and you haven't already, don't forget to take a quick second to smash that like button. Helps me out a ton, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Also, leave your comments, share this out. If this is your first time here and you wanna stay up to date on everything going on, totally free, why not? Come join the Ram Fam. All you gotta do is hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell. If you have any specific questions, shoot them to me in the DM on Instagram at steveram3, best way by far to get a hold of me. And consider joining my second channel, Steve Ram Finance, to learn about growing wealth and personal finance. And I share with you some of the things that I've learned over the years from multimillionaires to help out my financial situation. And I pray that it is a blessing for you and your family. If you wanna join, I'll pin a comment down below, click the link, go subscribe, turn on notifications. But with that being said, you guys, once again, thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you in the next one. Take care. God bless. This is Steve.